Matchup number five, last one, that damn serve against uh, GE Packer Killers. ESPN having Packer Killers winning 100 to 70. Um, that damn serve hasn't put in his last uh, his his last receiver spot yet. Um, we'll see who he puts. I'm guessing he's gonna probably put like Jeremy Macklin, maybe maybe Braylon Edwards in there. Um, we'll see. That might actually really affect the matchup. Um, both teams are one and three. The loser of this matchup is. Uh, I think out, to be honest with you, the, the, the regular season of fantasy isn't that long, and um, there's a lot of teams, you're going you're gonna to be three games be, behind of a playoff spot when you lose this game. Um, big playoff implications on this one, to more not to get in, but to stay in the running at least, um, and go to two and three. If you look at it, both teams not really killed by the bye. Um, that damn serve hurt a little bit more. Brandon Marshall, Heinz Ward, Leon Washington all out, so it just gives him a little less options. Um, Brandon Marshall is going to probably be replaced like by Macklin or Braylon Edwards, like I said. But at quarterback, Matt Shaw against the Giants, I think they're going to be throwing a lot. Uh, I'm going to ESPN saying 13. I'm actually saying 22. Um, Tony Romo. Yes, we didn't say in 13. I'm saying 19. Both quarterbacks are going to put up a lot more points than what, what, what's expected. Um, at running backs, hold on one second. Oh, so much better. At running backs, uh, or the mid, mid level for uh, GE Packer Killers. Santonio Holmes, he's back for the Giants, and now he's back on a GE Packer Killers roster. Um, we'll see how he does in his first thing. We'll see how much uh, Sanchez and him have the timing. That, that would be my concern. I might not play him the first week that he's back, especially against a good Minnesota defense. Uh, Peyton Hillis, Peyton Hillis, number eight fantasy running back. He's scoring more than Chris Johnson. If anybody could have told me that before the year, I swear to God I would give you money. And no one, no one would have. No one would have. Uh, Peyton Hills against Atlanta, decent defense, um, pretty good against the run. Give me Hills at only about 12 points this week. Um, Steven Jackson against Detroit, he's a beast. We know he's a little hurt with his grind if you watch the game. He got points, but his stride was very, very small. Um, I still think he's going to put up some points against Detroit. Give me 14 for uh, Steven Jackson. On the other side, Michael Turner, uh, Darren McFadden, Sean Green. Sean Green, why are you still starting? Why are you still starting? You're not in, in football. Now you're the backup to LaDainian Tomlinson. You got 10 points last week because you got it in garbage time against a shitty Buffalo team. Give me about... Five points for Sean Green this week. Um, Darren McFedding in San Diego. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot more after San Diego gets off to a fast start. McFadden, unfortunately, will only get about nine points, eight points. Michael Turner against the Cleveland defense. Um, Michael Turner's not been looking like Michael Turner, but I think he's still going to hit double digits. Give me about 11 for Michael Turner. Um, receivers. Um, I'm not going to say who that damn serves is going to be. It's going to be Ocho Cinco, though. That's that one we know for sure. Um, Ocho's going against the Tampa Bay defense. Um, with the huge week that T.O. had last week, look for Ocho to actually see a little bit more looks because uh, they might be playing up on uh, T.O. a little bit more. Um, on G. Packer Killer side, Randy Moss. Well, Tom Brady should be going to – oh, he's on the Vikings now. Brett Favre will be throwing to Randy Moss back at home, back with that big old 8-4 on his jersey. Look for Randy Moss to have a nice little homecoming. But against the Jets, fantasy-wise, only about eight points. Um, Hakeem Nix, Giants against uh, Houston. Hakeem Nix has been a nice little surprise. Number four fantasy receiver. Look for him to keep going. Um, Jeremy Shockey against Greg Olson. Don't like either of them. I think they're both going to get under 10 points, especially with Todd Collins throwing. And uh, Jeremy Shockey doesn't get featured as much in the in the New Orleans offense as what I would have thought in a, a year and a half ago when he went there. But um, 
I think it's still continuing that way. I mean, he's the what the number 11 fantasy uh, tight end. They don't look for anything better of that. And Greg Olson now has Todd Collins going into in a Mike Martz offense with that shitty tape together line. I mean, Vishante Shanko against the Jets, I'm going to keep saying it, but it's not going to change. Um, maybe, you know what, you might not be one in three if you actually listened or watched the video. But who knows? Uh, G Pack Killer is going to run away with this game. They're a one in three, but they're not one in three. Uh, Against a lot of teams, Packer Killers could be three and one or four and zero in some circumstances. Um, give me, give me, uh, um, give me Packer Killers this uh, this week. I should say that he's putting up about a hundred. That damn serve is going to put up around seventy two. Uh, that's a twenty eight point difference. Um, uh, ooh, Sakeem Nix, my fantasy stud, fantasy dud is uh, Greg Olson. Again, um, this matchup is actually kind of boring. Sorry, guys, uh, but it is. Uh, talk to you later. Here's my fantasy predictions and trophy predictions. Bye.